Welcome to the Kaiser Report. I'm Max Kaiser. Hey, you know, the currency war is on. Bring out the body bags. The first shots have been fired in the war to end all wars, the currency war. Stacey Herbert. Oh yeah, Max Kaiser. This has been the big story of the Kaiser Report for the past three or four years. And the FT front page is the Financial Times reads, Germany to shift 54,000 gold bars home one of the biggest shipments of yellow metal on record, which inspired this front page on the Financial Times was this announcement on the Deutsche Bundesbank website, Deutsche Bundesbank's new storage plan for Germany's gold reserves. By 2020, the Bundesbank intends to store half of Germany's gold reserves in its own vaults in Germany. The other half will remain in storage at its partner central banks in New York and London. Well, uh, Germany has no partner central banks. This is uh, every man for himself, mm -hmm. and uh, those with the most gold are going to win the currency war, as we've been warning about now for years. This is why the euro has been trading relatively well against the dollar, because in the eurozone there are 12, 13,000 tons of gold uh, versus the U.S., which has maybe 8,000 tons. But one of the big problems, Stacey, of course, is the central banks have leased their gold out and sold it, and it's now sitting in the pockets of um, hundreds of millions of Indians uh, on the continent of India. And so when Germany goes to collect their gold, they find that it's not there. It's been sold. And that's what this war is all about, especially now that the central banking system is collapsing. And countries want the only currency without counterparty risk, the only currency you can't print more of, and that would be gold. Now, they mentioned their partner central banks. Now, this is a remnant of the Bretton Woods system. So post-World War II, the U.S. dollar was declared the world's reserves currency. But for international trade, it was backed by gold. And because you were having to settle your balance of trade via the central banks, it was convenient in 1945 and 1950 and 1960 for Germany to store gold in New York at the New York Fed because if they had a trade imbalance with America, they would just settle it there through the bank or settle it with the UK via the bank. But now, since 1971, it's really been, there's no point for them to really store so much gold in these central banks. So now they say to this end, now that they have all the storage they say it's just a storage plan, remember. The Bundesbank is planning a phased relocation of 300 tons of gold from New York to Frankfurt, as well as an additional 374 tons from Paris to Frankfurt by 2020. This means they're taking their percentage of their gold held in France to zero, and they're reducing their holdings in New York by 20%, because right now they have 1,500 tons there. So over the next seven years, they're going to bring 40 tons a year back. Now, since 2009, central banks have been buying gold, reversing a 40-year trend. And I would expect Germany now not only to be repatriating gold, but to be actively buying gold, just like Russia is actively buying gold. China is actively buying gold. Uh, Germany will be actively buying gold as well, and as it becomes known that this gold is not where it's supposed to be, expect panic buying of gold. That's how we get to $10,000 an ounce on gold and $500 an ounce on silver. Now, this is a huge political statement as well to ask for your gold back in light of the fact that all our international trade, all our international currencies are based on fiat and faith in that system. So the fact that Germany is asking for so much gold, as the Financial Times says, the largest ever movement of gold in, in world history. And then, so the Financial Times gives a hint of the reason why Germany would make such a grand request. Bundesbank weighs bullion against public pressure. So I want to look back and how did this public pressure come about? And indeed, I could tell you why it came about. Here is the man Nostradamus warned you about, the one that would cause World War III. <laughs> Max <It's> Adamus. <laughs> Max Adamus. That this is World War III. It's a currency war. We've been calling this for 10 years, really, since we started doing our podcast 10 years ago. We said this is what this century is going to be defined as the currency war by gold and silver. Gold was $250 an ounce at that time. Now it's $1,600, $1,700 an ounce. And we've taken our audience with us as the most uh, uh, outstanding performing asset for the decade. So let's roll back to what, how this caused, Ma how Max caused this. In case you are not aware of this, there's a film called Brown's Bottom. And in it, we made this in 2008. And on March 17th, 2008, that was a Monday, 
Max and I had an appointment with the Bundesbank, with the head of their gold department. And what happened on Sunday, the 16th of March, 2008, was Ben Bernanke had slashed interest rates by 75 basis point. Unprecedented move to slash interest rates so much and on a Sunday. And the reason he did this was because of the collapse of Bear Stearns. Also, gold had just hit the $1,000 mark the first time ever. So here, Max had an appointment with the Bundesbank head of the gold department. And the reason for it was we were investigating Brown's Bottom, why he sold their gold at historic lows. We wanted to find out why the Bundesbank kept their gold in order to understand the psychology of Gordon Brown. Lo and behold, there was panic, there was chaos, and let's turn to the very last clip of that film of what happened when Max went into the Bundesbank. He was not allowed to speak to the head of gold, but he did speak to another executive inside the building. The, the fear is that the banking system itself is in peril. That is the question, yeah. That's the question. It's in America, it's in Germany, you know. Right. But you don't know. Actually, now you don't know what's, what's going on. No? Up to now, I mean, you, you don't really know what, what's coming. No? What's coming. Uh, the most fascinating thing I learned is that all the gold in Germany is in New York. Now, since that <laughs> film was made, Stacy, central banks around the world have been buying gold. Uh, they have also been printing money. The amount of money that central banks have been printing since that film came out is up 400 uh, percent. Many, many trillions of fiat dollars, yen, and uh, euros have been created. The total supply of gold around the world during the same period of time is up a whopping 8 percent. Well, again, you know, that was before the collapse of Lehman Brothers, before the collapse, the near collapse of the global financial system. And in response to that film, Gat to the Gold Antitrust Action Committee said this, Kaiser's documentary may be sensational for getting an acknowledgement from the German Central Bank for the first time that Germany's gold reserves are actually in the custody of the United States. This is a detail the Bundesbank long has denied to others who have inquired and is potentially a matter of great controversy in Germany. This is what Gatta wrote in 2009, August 2009. Since then, of course, there's been Lars Schall doggedly pursuing this story, emailing the Bundesbank every single day for the last four years. And this turned into the tabloid story, Bild and Handelsblatt all covered it in Germany. And then it got up to the Congress people, senators, and their pol politicians. And now we have a situation where they're asking for their gold back. Here's a number that will be one of the defining numbers of 2013, grams per capita. This is the uh, division of total gold held by a country divided by its population. Number one in the world is Switzerland with about 126 grams per capita. America's got about 25 grams per capita. But that's, of course, assuming that the gold is in Fort Knox, which a lot of people argue it's not. And uh, Germany and the rest of Europe and people around the world want to boost their gr grams per capita number as we enter this currency war, which you, you can look at it this way, Stacey. We've gone from the Cold War to the Gold War. <laughs> yes. And now, is this Gold War going to go down so, you know, easily in the United States? Because, of course, this is uh, really a shot across the bow of the U.S. dollar reserve standard. So let's look at what the largest bond fund manager in the world says about this. This is also on the front page of the Financial Times, Mohammed El Arian, Germany's gold move. He says, quote, this unusual and highly visible decision is sure to trigger an explosion of media commentary relating both to motivation and implications especially since Germany joins Iran, Libya, and Venezuela in making such a move. Now, Max, we all know what happened to Libya. We all know what is happening to Iran and Venezuela. This is a remarkable threat, essentially. Well, it is a threat. And uh, 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 this fellow who works at PIMCO with Bill Gross, of course, PIMCO is the biggest bond portfolio in the world. And this is uh, a continuation of what we're seeing for example, Paul Singer, who has uh, owed some money from uh, Argentina, uh, seized one of their ships at sea. Here, PIMCO is saying, um, unless you keep buying U.S. Treasury bonds, 
expect to happen to you, it happened to Gaddafi. Expect to happen to you, it happened to Saddam Hussein. Uh, our contacts at the State Department of America will come and bomb you. That's what this fellow at PIMCO is saying. So when did a bond manager have access to the Pentagon to go kill the comp competition? Oh, that's the American business model. That's the Washington consensus, isn't it? Uh, we don't want to compete. We'll just freaking kill you. Uh, thank L. Ron, L. Pimco, Pimp, Pimp, Bond, Pimp. You know, who needs that? Who needs that? What about capitalism? What about competition, Pimco? Don't kill your competitors, you freaking cowardly moron. Yes, but listen, they are living in a world in a matrix in which they are the Bond kings. Here, they've actually been advising clients, and Bill Gross has been quite vocal that he himself is buying gold for his own portfolio. But that's within the context of a fiat currency global system in which the U.S. dollar is king. When Germany does this, however, it's not just a simple investor protecting their wealth. This is a political statement. This is an act of war. They see that it makes the, their whole paradigm of investment change. It, it is an act of war. And Germany is correct to want to repatriate their gold. And they should step it up a bit. And I think this is the opening shot. They should demand not 500 tons or 600 tons. They should demand everything. They should be out there aggressively buying gold. And people in Germany, you should be buying gold yourself. Join the Silver Liberation Army and the global insurrection against banker occupation. Buy silver and gold yourself, German. In America, look at it this way. They, they, they threaten to take their guns, and there's mass panic at the gun store. Imagine when they say, well, we're not sure about the U.S. dollar anymore. We're going to have to roll it up to a global uh, special drawing right. There's going to be mass panic of gold buying, driving it to $10,000 an ounce, my, uh, my target, which has been in, in place for 10 years. So Mohammed al Arian concludes with this, the most likely outcome right now is for Germany's decision to have minimum systemic impact. But should this be wrong and the decision fuel greater suspicion, the resulting hit to what remains a multilateral policy cooperation will be problematic for virtually everybody. So again, he's seeing a breakdown of the global system, which is why I think he's not saying like, oh, as an investor, this is a bad decision for Germany. He's saying, wow, the entire system in which we, PIMCO, operate, in which we are the bond kings, in which we are the guys connected to the U.S. dollar money issuers, that system's falling apart, and what do we do? Well, it's an insurrection against the bond king. <laughs> the bond king must topple. <laughs> <laughs> buy gold and silver and wipe them all out! Wipe them out! There's got to be a scorched earth policy against the paper uh, pushers, the paper bugs. A scorched earth. That means all fiat currencies exterminated. <laughs> And then finally, you did mention what the investor, the ordinary person out there should do. And I was sent this to me, a photo from somebody in Sarasota, Florida, and they went to a Mexican taco stand, and there was a game, and if you look at this picture, it says, silver coins are frequently added to this game. The Chinese government is urging its one billion citizens to buy silver in order to hedge against inflation and the devaluing of currency. Should you be lucky enough to win a silver coin in this game, save it as it could be easily worth $100 in just a few years. Well, in Mexico, the word for money is silver. And that's been true around the world, countries around the world. Mexicans are no fools. They'd be buying that silver. All right, Stacey, thanks so much. Thank you, Max. Stay tuned for the second half. I'll be speaking to Doug Casey. You know how sometimes you see a story and it seems so whole and complete, you think you understand it? And then you glimpse something else. You hear or see some other part of it and realize everything you thought you knew, you don't know? I'm Tom Hartman. Welcome to The Big Picture. for decades. If you had 15,000 people killing each other in any other country, there would be diplomats, there would be mediators, it would go to the UN. Self-imposed outcasts from society. I'm going to attack myself. Am I going to attack my brother? 
You understand? Am I going to attack my own image in the mirror? Or am I going to eventually attack the cause of my anger and my frustration? <laughs> Two of the most violent gangs in U.S. history. It's just the whole model, kill or be killed. With colors matching the national flag. But this country uses violence whenever it chooses, and then it legitimizes the violence. They are made in America on RT. Welcome back to the Kaiser Report. I'm Max Kaiser. Time now to go to Washington, D.C. and speak with author, publisher, investor Doug Casey of Casey Research. His latest book is called Totally Incorrect. Doug, first your thoughts on the official statement from the German Bundesbank that they will be repatriating all of their gold held in France and 20 percent of their U.S. held reserves. Doug Casey. It makes all the sense in the world, actually. Uh, it made sense in the past when the Russians were there, when the East Germans were there to diversify geographically their gold, but uh, it serves no useful purpose to store these go uh, their gold with uh, uh, foreign central banks, which actually they have no reason to trust. Well, Doug, uh, we've got a, a move around the world. Central banks are repatriating gold as part of what some are calling the, the currency war. It appears as though all the central banks printing lots and lots of money, trillions of dollars of fiat currency, is making these central banks nervous. Uh, are they right to be nervous? Yes, they should be nervous because the assets of most central banks in the world are the paper currencies of other central banks, mainly the uh, Federal Reserve, mainly the U.S. government's paper money. And there's no reason at all why they should trust that. So eventually they're going to start trading all that paper for gold. That's what's going to happen because as you're, as you're well aware, the Russians and the Chinese, when they're dealing with each other have to use at the moment U.S. dollars that cleared through New York. This makes no sense at all. The Indians and the Iranians. So they're going to cut the U.S. dollar out of the, out of the loop totally in the future. Okay, so I want to get focus on this German repatriation of gold for a second. Um, I'm looking at the comments from Mohammed El Iron, who's the um, co-head of PIMCO, biggest bond buyer owner in the U.S. He, he wrote an opinion piece in the FT. And he likens this act by Germany as similar to the behavior of Libya, Iran, Venezuela. Now, how likely is that we're going to see a serious repercussions against Germany? In other words, Doug, uh, you have a, a private investor who is stepping into the fray here and virtually threatening Germany uh, with Libya-like actions for simply wanting their gold back. Uh, there's a couple of moving parts here. What do you see, Doug Casey? I really don't know what's on the minds of the Germans, except it seems it impresses me as a very intelligent thing for them to do. And I'm sure they're sorry if the Americans and the French don't like it, but they have to act in their own best interests. And it's certainly in their own best interest to have their gold repatriated to the place where it belongs. Uh, and as far as whether we're going to have any wars in the future, I, I don't think there's any question about that. because. As the going gets tough within countries, governments always like to redirect the problem to somebody else, some nasty foreigners that are hurting us. And uh, some of these people actually think that uh, war is good for the economy. So yes, I'm sure we're going to see more of that type of thing. And maybe not just little sport wars like in Afghanistan and what was in Iraq, uh, real wars where uh, the U.S. goes to hunt big game, which is going to be very, very dangerous. Okay, uh, Doug Casey, let's talk about your book, Totally Incorrect. Uh, you compare the U.S. to the last days of the Roman Empire. Uh, is this act by Germany a sign of the end of the dollar as reserve currency and America as a superpower post Brenton Woods? Well, actually, I see a lot of trouble in the future, and perhaps this is a straw in the wind. 
Because none of these governments trust each other. I mean, after all, one of the main things that governments do is go to war with each other. Uh, so that uh, I expect you're going to see more of this type of thing in the future. Why should the Germans be storing their gold with the French and the Americans? Uh, it, it makes no sense. It makes as much sense as for the Americans to store their gold with the Germans. No, I mean, just as every individual ought to have gold and keep it in his old, own possession, so should these uh, banks. Well I, th well, I think what Al, Al Ryan is saying here is that Germany is declaring an act of currency war. So is this World War III, as some have posited, because uh, it, it, it sounds a bit rich. However, with the, if you take into consideration um, the current spate of, 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 of uh, economic malaise around the world the, and, and the attempt by governments to, to debase their own currencies as a way to fight this war, is, this, is it too much to say that Germany is really stepping up and making this really an act of a currency war, Doug? I don't think there's any question about the fact that uh, the U.S. is headed downhill rapidly. Uh, one of the relatively few laws that I believe in is the second law of thermodynamics. And one of the implications of that is that all things wind down after time. Things always revert to the mean. And I'm afraid that the U.S. Uh, has become corrupt over the years. In fact, I don't even call it America anymore. Uh, it used to be America, but America was an excellent idea, a unique idea. But now that geographical area of North America is just the U.S. And uh, sure, it's going downhill. It's becoming highly taxed, highly regulated, uh, very corrupt, very constipated. It's uh, and warlike, so that uh, there's not much to distinguish the U.S. from any of the other 200 nation states in the world anymore. It's a real pity. All right, now Doug Casey, you've been talking about gold for a number of years. Uh, you're known for this uh, around the world, and um, these views of yours and others uh, at first were not really embraced uh, because of the what I would call the the paper lobby or the paper pushers. But now we see a sea change. Uh, with the actions of Germany and others to repatriate gold, et cetera. We had something very recently, Doug Casey, which I, f I found remarkable. There was a push in America for a platinum coin, which would not be made of platinum, of course, or have a very minimal uh, amount of platinum, as a way to fix this debt uh, budget, uh, de the, the debt ceiling. Uh, but it's also, at the same time, there seems to be schizophrenia, because people don't like the idea of a precious metal like gold being backing the currency, but they somehow like the idea of a, fan a fantasy a uh, platinum coin fixing their debt ceiling problem. Is this schizophrenic? Is it madness? What does this tell you, Doug? Yes, it's, uh, it's actually stupidity, Max. Uh, and I'm not saying that Mr. Bernanke and uh, whoever it was that came up with this ridiculous idea has uh, a low IQ. That's not the case. I'm defining stupidity as an unwitting tendency to self-destruction. And uh, the idea of creating a trillion dollar coin is really to get around the debt limits and things like that, which are all a charade anyway. What's happening is that the U.S. government is spending, well, it depends on how you do your accounting with accrual accounting or cash accounting, but they're running deficits of in between a trillion and a half and four or five trillion dollars per year if you use accrual accounting. Uh, so they're going to be printing up lots of money. And whether they uh, do it by creating trillion dollar coins uh, or not, it's academic. They're, they're going to destroy the remaining value of the U.S. currency. And it's going to happen quickly at this point, not gradually as it has since 1913 when the Fed was created. All right, now, Doug Casey, let's move over to uh, another area that I'd, I'd say that you're, you're well known for. I'm, I've been on your mailing list for uh, probably more than a decade, so I'm, I'm aware of your, your, your ideas here pertaining to uh, your thoughts on Argentina and the idea that you are, you've en encouraged people to come to Argentina, a community in Argentina, to, I, I don't want to put too, too, too much of a spin on this, but to, to, I'll say it's a, a kind of a libertarian values uh, embraced in, in by, by a community, and you've been talking about this for a while. Recently, 
we have people and mimicking you, Doug, if I can say that. You've got Glenn Beck, who wants to start a new community in Texas based on libertarian values. You've got the Koch brothers, who want to uh, take over an island in Detroit and create a new society based on libertarian values. Yeah. So my first, my yeah. first question is, uh, uh, how's that going? How's this community in Argentina going, Doug? Hmm. It's actually going fantastically well, and I don't say that as a promoter. Uh, I think that uh, Estancia de Cafajate is probably, in fact, certainly the best development in the world. At and cut any in price. for a second. If I can just cut in, I'm, I'm sure it's a lovely place to be, but the idea that you, uh, there's so much, uh, there's a split ideologically and e economically in the United States in terms of what the government should be doing, let's say, a pro-capitalist yeah. um, agenda, and yeah. uh, folks are seeming to say, you know, we want to secede. We, they're mimicking Ayn Rand and the idea of uh, the Galt's Gulch, the idea of Atlas Shrugged. We're going to walk away from the table. It, does your community embrace that idea, and is that what we're seeing? Are people just saying, we're shrugging, we're, we're walking away, we don't want to play anymore? Your thoughts? Yeah, there's certainly an element of that, but the difference between what we're doing and what some others are doing is that uh, we think it's important to diversify your assets and your lifestyle internationally so that everything isn't in the bailiwick of one government. Because when you live in the country where you have a nationality and where you have your business, uh, that government will treat you as a milk cow, treat you as a, a possession of theirs. So this is why it's good to diversify into a different political entity. Uh, where you'll be treated better. You'll be treated as a, a rich tourist, in effect, cultivated. So uh, I think it's very nice what these other folks are doing, but uh, I, I question the wisdom of trying to do it within the United States for Americans. But we have, we have people from 28 different countries uh, that have uh, uh, joined us down there. Okay, so um, you're saying really you've got to be hedged about what's going on in the U.S. and the idea of creating something within the U.S., you've actually not hedged yourself at all, so it's going to be self-defeating for these people. I think that's a, an interesting point that people need to take on board. Now, on the subject of markets, um, there's, there's a branch of, I guess you could call, a uh, branch of libertarianism which veers toward what, you, what some call an anarcho-capitalism, where, uh, where you have no rules at all. There's a belief that the markets are entirely self-correcting. And we only have about 30 seconds left, Doug. What are your thoughts on this? Uh, I, I actually think that that is the correct way to, uh, for a society to be run. Look, the government as an entity is pure coercion. There's no voluntarism. It's pure force. It comes out of the barrel of a gun, as Mao Te Sung said. So if you're going to have a government, it should just defend you. An army for, for from a, a threats from abroad, a police for domestic criminals, and a court system allowing you to adjudicate disputes without resorting to force. And a government should do nothing else besides that. All right, well, Doug Casey, I'd love to speak with you uh, some more on this uh, market uh, and self-correction, but unfortunately, we're out of time. I have to say goodbye, but thanks so much for being on the Kaiser Report. Max, a pleasure. Thank you. All right, and that's going to do it for this edition of the Kaiser Report with me, Max Kaiser, and Stacy Herbert. I'd like to thank my guest, Doug Casey of Casey Research. If you'd like to contact us, please tweet us at Kaiser Report or at Facebook.com forward slash. Kaiser Report. Until next time, Max Kaiser saying bye, y'all.